In this video, I finally got all the parts needed to assemble our short block into a long block. And these are the parts that I'm going to be using. First is the Felpro multi-layer steel head gasket, uh, part number 9792PT-2 and 9790PT-2. So I like to use multi-layer steel gaskets or MLS gasket. Uh, you don't have to use Felpro if you don't want to. Uh, ARP head studs. These are part number 1564101. Uh, these are the hex head. You can also get 12 point bolts for these. Uh, you don't necessarily have to use ARP studs. I like to use them uh, because they're reusable, but unless you're making uh, you know, 700 horsepower, so you'd probably be fine with the torque to yield. Uh, don't quote me on those numbers, but uh, the re main reason why I like to use them is uh, uh, that they're reusable and that they hold a lot. And we also got uh, ARP cam bolts. These are M12, part number 2561001, need two of those. Uh, some people will reuse the factory uh, cam bolts, but uh, they're torque to yield, so I, I don't like to reuse them. We're going to use these comp cam adjustable uh, cam gears. These are great. They make uh, dialing in the cam so easy. Uh, part number 10254. And I also got melling. This is a timing chain uh, kit. This comes with the tensioners, uh, all of the guides and the uh, tensioner arms, chains, and the metal tensioners. And the reason why I went with the melling one, the part number 3-387SC, uh, I usually use the Cloys stuff, but the Cloys lately has been sending uh, plastic tensioners. Even when the picture shows a metal tensioner, uh, I've been getting a uh, plastic one. So using melling for this one. Uh, also, this engine uh, came from a 99. Mustang GT and it had the, the, the two-piece crank gear. I don't like reusing those, so I got a one-piece crank gear. And when you use the one-piece crank gear, you need to have this thinner uh, stamped steel reluctor wheel for the uh, crank position sensor. And the part number on that is XW1Z12A227-AC. And our one piece gear is melling part number S869. So these should be all the parts needed to uh, install our heads, which are down there, all assembled onto our short block. Let's get to it. Now, before we put the studs in there, I'm going to wipe it down uh, the deck surface of the block. Uh, just to get anything off of there, I'm going to use some brake cleaner. And uh, I'm going to put the brake cleaner on the rag. And the reason why I'm doing it now is since we get the studs in there, it's going to be a little difficult to, to wipe it down. And now I'll go and put the studs in there. Notice one end has a lot more threads and one has less. And one has an Allen at the top. These go in hand tight, uh, just bottomed out. And that's only, the Allen is only supposed to help you put it in hand tight. Uh, once you have all your studs in there, uh, some of them might be hard to get in. You might have to work them back and forth to get them to go all the way back in. But once they're all in, they should all be relatively the same depth. Uh, if they're a little bit off, that's okay. I also put these in dry. Uh, some people will put uh, the ARP lube on there, um, but uh, I put them in dry. And now we can wipe down the top of the pistons one last time. The Felpro ones are marked on the top let's say right bank and left bank so this is going to be the one for the right bank also now's a good time to double check to make sure you got dowels on there locating dowels for your heads and same thing with the left bank it says left bank on there okay now before we put our heads on let's spray it down with the brake cleaner again and now we know that this one one the cam is facing forward uh, but this also doesn't have the plug in the front for the tensioner. Uh, what I like to do is I like to line up the bottom holes with the, with the studs and then just kind of rock it on there. Okay, 
And our ARP studs come with uh, these washers. I like to wash these off. I just spray them with a little bit of gunk uh, engine degreaser. And then wipe them down. And now that they're all wiped down, you can see there's one side that's got like serrated. Uh, this is kind of new. I don't think uh, ARP's always been doing this, but you want to put that serrated edge down. And the idea is that that kind of helps grip it up against the head. So I'll put all these on. And the ARP studs come with uh, assembly lube. I'll take about a, eh, about a pea size of that and I'll put it on the threads of the washer and the washer okay so the way I put it is I put it right in the corner uh, and then spread it up the, the threads and I push it down on the washer and the idea being that when the nut goes on there it'll move the lube all around the threads and when it gets down in the washer it'll spread it around the washer now we put our nuts on Yeah, here's the torque pattern that uh, ARP recommends. First pass is 25, then 50, then 70. Put that right there so I can see it. What I like to do is I like to just snug them up. I've already, I've already snugged them by hand. Now I'm just gonna barely snug them with this and the torque pattern. Now I got my torque wrench set to 25. And now 50. And finally, 75. Then I like to go across them all just to make sure. And I'll repeat that on the passenger or on the driver's side. Now we'll take a look at these comp adjustable cam gears. And these come with uh, detailed instructions on how to use them. This is going to be the driver's side, it's got the uh, sensor. Uh, spot on there so that's how you know which one goes on that side but these are great uh, the way that in a nutshell you can see uh, there's a little spot in there that's got zero uh, to six and then zero to six so you can go six degrees advance or six degrees retard either way uh, and the way you do it is you loosen up uh, you loosen up these keyways and uh, you can you can move the whole thing like that and then tighten them back down That'll be in my next video on how to use these. The other good design about these is that um, when you put the washer on here and then put the bolt on there, uh, it locks it together. Yeah, there's these four uh, little Allen keys that they'll they'll say put red Loctite on, um, but what really holds it on there is going to be that washer and the bolt once we get them on there. And before you put your sprockets on there, you got to put these little spacers on. One goes on each side. This one's a pretty tight fit. Now we can put our uh, cam bolt washer and cam bolt in. I've got ARP lube on the threads and on the bottom of the bolt head, but nothing on the washer. And we'll do the same for the other side. I like to somewhat center these washers. There's a little bit of play in them, but I try to center them around the bolt. I don't want any vibrations going on on either of them. I'm going to put the keyway of the crank uh, pretty much straight up to get ready to uh, set the timing on this thing. Now we can put our one piece uh, melling crank gear on there, crank sprocket. And now the way this would go on is uh, so that you know, I think the factory one will say inside and outside. Uh, but if the keyway is at about uh, the 10 o'clock, 10.30 position, uh, this dot will be facing straight down. So if you have it this way, uh, the dot is up over here in a different position. So keyway at 10 o'clock puts the dot straight down. So that's how we put it on. And then our milling kit. We got our guides, tensioners, cast iron, tensioner arms. 
and chains. For the passenger side, the melling one's a little different. So this part right here is thicker, and so it comes with a longer M8 screw. This is the factory one, and if you try to use the factory one, there's only like two or three threads hanging out the bottom. That's not much for an engagement. So it includes this new bolt, which is nice, uh, and that'll give us plenty of thread engagement, and then we'll use the factory bolt back here. This is just uh, M8. Uh, M8 by 1.0, probably by uh, 25 or something. And for the driver's side, don't forget that one of these is going to be holding the uh, oil pump on there, so it's going to be really long. And all four of those are torqued to 90 inch pounds. Okay, before we put the chains on there, uh, the dots on these sprockets aren't very easy, so I'm going to put a little, little bit of paint marker on it. Now before we put the chains on, it's not a bad idea to at least run them through some oil. I'm going to put a little bit of 5W20 in this thing. And take our chain. And just kind of walk it through there so it gets all, gets a little quick little bath in some oil. Okay, and our chain's got some dark links here, so we'll put that dark link on the dot. Okay, and so I got the dots lined up with the dark chains on either end. And now before we put our tensioner arms on there, there's two different ones. You can see how this one sticks out a little more than this one. And uh, they're not interchangeable, so one goes on one side or the other. What I do is I put them on and then make sure that it's lined up with the keyway. So that one, the longer one, is going to go on this side. And then the one that's shorter is going to go on this side. Now we can put our left bank tensioner in. And with an oiled up chain, we'll do the same thing on this side. Line up the dot. Now we can put our pivot arm. tensioner in and finally these tensioners get torqued to 20 foot-pounds okay and lastly you want to check and make sure that your dark links are lined up with your dot those are lined up and lined up up here I'm not going to pull the pins on these yet, and I'm not going to torque uh, these down yet, just in case when I do the timing on it, uh, for whatever reason, if I have to pull those back off. But, so that's basically it. Now we've turned our short block into a long block. The main difference between long block, obviously, and a short block is going to be the heads. Uh, but if it's, a, uh, if it's a push rod engine, a short block will sometimes have the cam in it. Um, but now we have a long block, and the next video I'll show how to degree the cams with these with these comp adjustable gears. I love these things; it makes it so easy.